Hey everyone, Brendan Snyder here. How are you? Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to another episode of New Music Finds, where I like to collect together all the different things that I've purchased over the past week, present it to you, give you a little bit of background on it, maybe even turn you on to something. Now, this one here is a very, very slow week for me. I actually only picked up five things after last week, which I think had 30 things, and the week before that might have had like 28 things. You know, some weeks are big, some weeks are small, but uh, no release is too small uh, for my bookshelf of, of music here and certainly no shortage of anything to listen to. So no worries there. But anyways, I will go through and break down these five releases for you guys and talk to you about it. And we'll do it in just a bit. But before we start, if you're new to my channel and you haven't already hit the subscribe button, please do. Also leave a comment, hit like. All those things do help support my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. And of course, as an added bonus, if you turn on notifications, you'll never miss an episode and you'll stay up to date on everything just like this with new music finds. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. And I always start off with new releases, of which I only got one. Now, the main one that I had wanted was the brand new Skid Row Live in London, which didn't ship for me or didn't come out, or I don't know what. I've heard that some of you guys got your copy of it. The story goes, at least with that for me, is that um, I had it pre-ordered since it was announced. It was set for release day delivery from Amazon. And all the way up until the middle of the day on Friday, it was supposed to arrive that day. And then I received a notification that said that it was um, out of stock and they didn't know if they were going to get it back in stock. And I had to give them approval to continue to try to locate it and get it, which is a really odd thing for a brand new release that had just dropped that day. I called up my local record store and they told me that it was pushed back. Now, as I said, some of you guys got yours. So I don't know if it was pushed back, it wasn't pushed back, limited quantities or what. All I know is I didn't get my copy. Amazon doesn't know when they're going to ship it to me. And my local record store also does not know when they are getting it in. So at least for me, bummer. <laughs> but I did manage to listen to it streaming wise. I did a full review of it. I will leave a link in the description if you want to check that out. But I don't have my physical copy yet. The one release that I did get in was the new Fleetwood Mac live album from the Mirage Tour in 1992. Uh, 92, 1982, of course, obviously, right? Um, but this was recorded over two different performances uh, that took place in Los Angeles at the Forum in, um, as I said, 82, October 21st and 22nd. And the release itself has six previously unreleased songs on it, so that's kind of a cool thing. The big difference for me, at least, with this live album versus the previous archival live release that they just did, uh, Rumors Live, was that this one here had a lot more energy to it. I sort of felt like the previous one they were just going through the motions on. So I was very glad to get a hold of this. But this one here, in my opinion, the vocals are pretty raw. The recording's pretty raw. I mean, it's, it's good. I, I'm probably giving you mixed signals on it in terms of that, but it's not like some of the other live recordings that we've gotten from Fleetwood Mac. So check it out before picking it up and know what you're getting at least uh, with it. Um, it is good release. That's why I chose to go ahead and order it. But like I said, I think it's kind of raw, um, but it's got a lot of energy in it. And so that's nice. Okay. Uh, next thing I want to talk to you about is one that totally bowled me over and um, I can't say enough great things about this. I will admit I did not know who this gentleman was up until very recently, and I don't necessarily expect you to know either. Scott Mosher, Deep Horizon. It's a solo album of his uh, from 2006, and he came to my attention through this release, Oceans of Night, and this album here, which I think is 2014, Midnight Rising. I even did a one-minute review to talk to you guys about this, but this album was sent to me from uh, Scott Oliva, who is the lead vocalist for the band Inner Strength. And so he sent me these, and along with sending me these and their brand new album, which you should totally check out, uh, he also sent me some of his other stuff, and Oceans of Night was one of them. But Oceans of Night is a band that is led by Scott Mosher, guitar player, keyboardist, multi-instrumentalist. And I was enjoying this so much 
that I wanted to check out some of the other stuff. So I looked up online, I found this and started listening to it and it just blew me away. So I went on Amazon and I ordered it. They even had it available for Prime. I got it in one day's time, but I went back and there's no more available. I guess that was the last copy, I don't know. So I don't know if you guys can go order one the way that I did, but definitely check it out streaming wise. It is so good. And the best way to describe it is like I have with Oceans of Night, which is basically if you like Fate's Warning, you like Queen's Reich, you're gonna like what Scott Mosher does and Oceans of Night. But also this sort of sounds like 80s keyboard ambient soundtrack from uh, like horror movies. So stuff that like John Carpenter does. It's got that sort of keyboard sounds with progressive metal style guitars and vocals. And also on this is Scott Oliva who sings on this. So if you like this album, the guitar player and vocalist are the same as on this solo album. And certainly uh, Scott Oliva, if you know him from Inner Strength, then you will dig what he's doing on this. So like I said, I can't recommend this enough. If you are a progressive metal fan, go check this out. I'll probably do a one minute review anyways of it just to try to get it out there and give a little bit more um, awareness to that album. All right, so last week I picked up uh, these two Thunder Mother releases. I've been enjoying some of the newer rock bands that are out there. I already had this one, the Black and Gold album release and really enjoyed it, but I'll have to say it didn't bowl me over. And then I picked these up and they did a lot more for me. And so I'm finding out I like these a lot more than this release here. So I had to go ahead and get this one, uh, which is the, uh, the album uh, Rock and Roll Disaster. So managed to get a hold of one more of their albums and glad to do that. But the interesting thing with the band is that only the guitar player remains. So as I'm getting really into this band, going back in their catalog, that's not who's going forward. Although I have already heard two songs from the upcoming Thunder Mother album, which is due out in February. So I'm very excited about that. But uh, three of the members broke off from that and formed their own group, Gems. And so if you like what Thunder Mother was doing, definitely check this out. This just came out in 2024, their album called Phoenix, and would highly recommend it. But otherwise, if you are a fan of Thunder Mother or you're not and you're checking them out, know that they have a brand new album coming out in February. And the new lead vocalist that's part of that lineup is really, really good. So I don't know, uh, again, what they're doing in, uh, I believe the band's from Sweden uh, over there, but uh, they've got some amazing vocalists coming to the forefront. Okay, next up is another new, newer rock band, new for me, because you know my tastes and interests go back 50 and 60 years. Um, is the band The Answer and their Never Too Late EP. I think this was their debut release. Um, I never had it at the time. It's got four tracks, but it also comes with a DVD. And I managed to get this new uh, sealed in shrink wrap for 99 cents. So I was uh, very much digging that. I've got one of their albums or two of their albums, I think, in my collection. Um, I first saw that band opening up for White Snake, and that's how they came to my attention. Uh, didn't know much about them. Went to see White Snake on the Purple album. They were opening up and uh, met the band. It was just a really cool experience, and I immediately turned around and bought a couple of their albums. Um, and I've just been slowly kind of collecting them uh, in my catalog as I come across them. But I found this, and like I said, it wasn't something I was aware of. Uh, it turned out to be this EP that's got three studio tracks and one live track that's on here, plus a bunch of uh, cool stuff from a DVD. So that was a nice little pick up. And then uh, this one here, uh, which I don't know how this one uh, went under the radar for me, but the latest Heathen, or at least I think it's the latest Heathen 2020 release, uh, Empire of the Blind is the name of this. And Heathen, who I knew was a thrash band back from the 80s and had done some stuff, really kind of came to the forefront for me, at least through Lee Altus, the guitar player, now being part of the band Exodus. And um, once Exodus had kind of reactivated themselves and, and him joining that band and saying, wow, I really like what he's doing, the lead work that's happening over there, I was like, well, what is 
you know, where is he from? Well, he's from Heathen. So, oh, okay, I remember them. Let me check them out. And I picked up some stuff. Um, definitely liking what they've done. But this one here, very, very cool. It's got, in my opinion, more melodic elements worked into that thrash sound. And maybe my mind is just more in line with this. Uh, if you, again, if you recall some of the releases I picked up in the last couple weeks, which was some um, older Exodus releases, uh, which is why the heathen thing popped into my head and why I chose to go uh, you know, grab that and pick that up, even though uh, he didn't play on the ones that uh, I picked up um, recently. My mind just has been in a more thrash, heavy metal sort of state of mind recently. It's actually kind of been all over the place, if you haven't noticed. I mean, we had David Gilmore drop stuff, so ambient, ethereal sounding music stuff. And I was digging into newer metal bands, modern metal sounds, and then thrash metal. And going back to, you know, classic rock stuff with like Fleetwood Mac. So, you know, a little bit all over the place, but... That's what I love about having a music library and being able to be in different mindsets and pick stuff up. So even though the five releases that I picked up this past week are really kind of all over the place, I don't know, for some reason, it all works very well for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this shorter abbreviated episode with only five things, but five really good things nonetheless. Hopefully it turned you on to something. Let me know the latest thing that you picked up and we'll go from there. All right, everyone, take care, have a good one. And I'll talk to you real soon. Bye-bye.